Hello everyone, welcome back to Easy Self Host. Today we're going to set up Haskell, which is the open source self hosted alternative to Telscale's control server. In our last video, we used Telscale VPN to access applications on our home server. If you haven't seen it yet, be sure to check out that video first, as we'll be reusing many of the concepts and tools from it. A key component from Telscale VPN is its control server which orchestrates the VPN nodes and provides services like authentication, overlay networking, and DNS. Haskell is the self-hosted alternative to Telscale's control server. By hosting it on a server with a public IP address, we can continue using Telscale's client software like mobile apps and Docker containers with our Haskell server. Alright, let's get started with running Haskell. The first thing we need is a server with a public IP address. I'm going to use DigitalOcean since I'm already familiar with it. You can choose any VPS provider that fits your region and pricing preferences. Haskell doesn't require a lot of resources, so I'll pick the lowest tier virtual server. Let's go ahead and launch the server. The official Haskell documentation recommends using Haskell without any HTTP proxy or container. However, I'm going to use both a proxy and a Docker container to run Haskell. Using a proxy allows you to run multiple web services on a single host, maximizing the value of your VPS. Running Haskell in Docker makes it easier to maintain. After the server is up, the first thing I'll do is to install Docker. I'll install Docker using the package manager. First, let's run apt update to update the package registry. Then, run apt install docker.io to install the Docker engine. We also need to run apt install docker compose v2 to install docker compose. Now let's move on to configuring and running Haskell on the server. I'll be writing all the Haskell configuration on GitHub and downloading it to my server later. You can also use any editor to write your configuration and upload it to the server. Here's the docker compose file we'll need to run Haskell. It creates two volumes to persist data for both Caddy and Haskell. Our first service is Caddy, which is our proxy server using the official Caddy image. We need to map ports 80 and 443 to handle HTTP and HTTPS traffic. For volumes, the Caddy volume will persist all the data under the slash data directory. We also need to map the Caddy file to the configuration path inside the container. The next service is the Haskell server, which uses the official image. We need to set a command to serve so it runs the server when the container starts. For volumes, the Haskell volume will persist the data. And we also map the configuration from the current directory to the configuration path inside the container. Now let's start writing the configuration file for Haskell. We can find the latest configuration template on the Haskell website. Let's copy the template and paste it into our editor. Then we can begin customizing it for our server. The first field we need to change is the server URL. This is the URL we'll use to connect to our Haskell server. I'm planning to use the domain haskell.cloud.easyselfhost.com. Remember, we need to set up a DNS record for this domain so it resolves to our server's IP address. The listing adder should be set to 0.0.0.0.8080 which means Haskell will listen on all IP addresses on port 8080 within the container. The matrix listen adder is for accessing server metrics. I'll keep it set to localhost since we don't need external access to metrics. The same goes for gRPC listen adder. If you don't need to use the remote Haskell command line tool, you can keep it on localhost. Moving forward, we can leave the noise key path at its default value. The next section is for the VPN IP prefixes. The private IP addresses within the Haskell VPN will be generated based on these prefixes. We can keep both IPv4 and IPv6 prefixes at their default values. The next section is for DERP and is disabled by default. For our use case, we don't need this service, so we can leave it disabled. We can keep the default values for most of the remaining configurations until we reach the DNS section. Similar to Telscale, Haskell also supports Magic DNS, which assigns a domain name to each VPN node. 
Although we don't need to own this domain, I recommend choosing one that doesn't resolve to any IP address. You can check this using the command line tool nslookup. For example, short domains like z.net or a.net don't have DNS records. But example.com does resolve to an IP address. For my setup, I'll use the domain ezsh.net. The name server section defines the DNS servers in the Haskell network. Global is for default DNS servers, and the values listed here are Cloudflare's DNS IPs. We don't need to change any of these values for now. Haskell supports adding custom DNS records via extra records field. We can use this to resolve our home server domains within the Haskell network later, so we don't need to run another DNS server. Let's remove any deprecated fields from the configuration. OpenID Connect supporting Haskell is still experimental, so I'm not going to use it at this time. The caddy file for the Haskell server is quite simple. We just need to proxy the domain name to the Haskell service on port 8080. Caddy will automatically handle the TLS certificate if we are using the public IP address. That's all for the configuration. Before we get started to run Haskell server, make sure the domain name resolves to the IP of our VPS. Now I'm going to clone my git repository and navigate to the directory that contains the Haskell docker compose file. From here, let's bring up the docker compose services. After that, we can run docker compose logs f to view the logs of both services and check if they're running successfully. Haskell doesn't have a built in admin graphic UI. To manage it, we'll need to use its command line tool. Since we're running it inside a container, we'll need to run docker exec haskell haskell to execute commands. Now let's connect our phone to the Haskell network. The first thing we need to do is to create a user for the phone. The command is Haskell users create followed by the username. On your phone, if you previously used the Telscale app to connect to Telscale, you will need to log out of your account. Additionally, go to the Telscale settings and enable reset keychain. Now open the Telscale app and tap login. Then tap the three dots in the top right corner. Select Use a Custom Coordination Server. Here, enter your Haskell server URL. After this, you will be prompted with a web page from your server containing a command to register your phone. Copy this command and paste it into your server terminal. Remember to add the docker exact Haskell prefix and replace username with phone. Run the command, and you will notice that Telscale logs in and the web view closes on your phone. In the accounts page, you can see that you are now using the Haskell network ezsh.net. On the server, run the command Haskell nodes list. You will see that the only node right now is your phone. You might notice that its name is localhost, but you can change that using the command Haskell nodes rename, followed by the new name you want, using the identifier one. Now this node is renamed to phone. This change is also reflected in the phone app. Now let's connect our phone server to Haskell using the Telscale Docker container. First, we'll create another user for our home server. Next, let's take a look at the configuration on our home server. The configurations are in a directory called Haskell Client. It also includes the Caddy service, which will replace our normal proxy server. This setup is very similar to the Telscale video. In fact, the Docker Compose file is mostly the same as in the Telscale setup. The Docker Compose file has two services, the Caddy server and Telscale. We first need to declare the ProxyNet Docker network that connects our proxy server to other self-hosted apps. Then let's create two volumes to persist data for Caddy and Telscale. For the Caddy service, I'm using my own version of the Caddy image because it includes the plugin to support common DNS providers. The Caddy service needs to publish ports 80 and 443 to accept HTTP and HTTPS requests. For volumes, we'll mount the Caddy volume to persist its data 
and map the caddy file to its configuration path. In the environment, we need to add the DNS provider token that's defined in the .env file, so caddy can acquire the TLS certificate. The Telscale service uses the official Telscale image. For its environment, we need an auth key to enroll this node into Haskell. The auth key is configured through the TS auth key variable in the .env file. I'll show you later how to create this key using Haskell. The next two environment variables are the common Telscale configurations. The environment we need for connecting to our own Haskell server is the last item. Here, we need to specify the login server URL to our Haskell server through the TS extra args environment. Otherwise, this container will try to connect to the Telscale server. Remember to set the network mode to the caddy service so they are on the same network stack. For volumes, we need to mount the Telscale volume to persist data and the TUN device for setting up the VPN. We also need to add these two capabilities for the VPN to work. Now let's move to our Haskell server to create the auth key. The command is haskell pre -auth key create user home server. Let's copy this key into the .env file. Next, let's take a look at the caddy file. This caddy file is the same as the one we use when we are not using any VPN. Now we can run this Docker Compose on our home server. Navigate to the directory that has this Docker Compose file and start running Docker Compose. On the Haskell server, if we list all the nodes, we can see the new node connected. We can also rename this node to something that makes sense. On our phone, we can see this new node listed in the Telscale app. Let's run some quick tests using an app called ISH. It's a simulated Linux shell for iOS. We can paint the home server's easysh.net domain name. And we can see that it works. Next, we can try accessing the self-hosted apps on our home server using their domain names. However, we'll find that it doesn't work. The issue is that this domain name still resolves to the home network's IP address. We can verify this using the nslookup command in the ISH app. To fix this, we can use the extra records field in the Haskell configuration. For example, we can add an entry to resolve image.home.easyselfhost.com to home server's IP address within the Haskell network which is 100.64.0.2. Currently, this configuration doesn't support wildcards, so we'll need to manually add each domain we need. If you have a lot of subdomains, you might consider hosting a dedicated DNS server and using split DNS in Haskell, just like we did in the Telscale video. After updating the configuration, we can restart the Haskell Docker Compose on the server. Once restarted, the nodes will automatically reconnect to the Haskell server. Now, if we run the nslookup command on our phone again, we'll see that the domain now resolves to the Haskell IP address. And if we open the browser and navigate to the image site, it will work as expected. This also applies to the other two apps for which we set up DNS records. Just like with Telscale, we can also enable the DNS on-demand feature to automatically connect to the VPN when we leave the home network. That brings us to the end of this video. If you found it helpful, please consider subscribing for more content like this. You can find all the configuration files on GitHub. The link is in the description below. Thank you for watching.